Hello gang, good to have you all back again. Of course, if you're tuning in for the first time, I am the Articulate Grunt. Welcome to my channel. So I was attending a meeting down at my local VFW post, and this gentleman comes up in front wanting to present something to all of us, something for our consideration, and opened up wanting us to consider coming out and attending Rainbows for Vets. And I've got to admit, mentally, I immediately did the, you have got to be kidding me. In a VFW, Veterans of Foreign Wars post, filled mostly with Vietnam-era vets, We've still got some World War II vets there, amazingly, but also Korean conflict and everything up to guys like myself that have served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And he's going to come into this group, mostly of older veterans, and try and recruit to come out for some gay support organization. So I figured with rainbows for vets, my brain immediately went there, and then as he carried on, I immediately felt like an arse. Because what he was actually there presenting us with was an open invitation to rainbow trout for veterans. It turns out that the United States' oldest rainbow trout hatchery was having a Veterans Appreciation Day. They wanted to come out and attend as they had a junior ROTC unit, bring out the flags, play the Pledge of Allegiance, the National Anthem, and invite us to a day of trout fishing. Catch limit, four rainbow trout. They were presenting lunch, poles, bait, everything that was needed, plus a station to clean it for us. So, yeah, I kind of felt like an arse, but did go with a number of fellows from the VFW Lodge and attend. Caught four great trout, brought them home. My wife made an outstandingly delicious dinner, which prompted us to go get licenses for the whole family so we can go trout fishing when and where we want, within the state and within regulations, and generally made a fabulous day of it. Turning around yesterday and getting motivated and investing in the future in a different kind of investment than most people look at, I went and made some long-term use of some parts of my lawn. A lot of people like to put in shade trees and things like that. I like trees that provide for the future and, as I said, are a bit of an investment. So, getting the whole family out together, we picked up two semi-dwarf apple trees, a semi-dwarf pear, and a full-size pear tree. Now, I say investing for the future because the semi-dwarf apples and the semi-dwarf pear will take two to four years to start bearing fruit, while the full-size pear tree is going to take four to six. Something to note, though, which I found planning for it, Apples and pear trees need cross-pollination. You can't rely on the bees and everything to pollinate a single tree from itself. So it's actually good to get a couple of different species, different varieties, and plant them close together, about 20 foot to the rule, and that way your pollination bugs can fly back and forth, pollinating and ensuring you get the best, most abundant fruit you can get from the trees. I know, not my usual vid, but I hope you enjoyed. Take care of yourselves, and remember, Get up and find something to get involved in, something to invest your time in. You know, something as little as planting some fruit trees that will grow, provide shade, and in the future, your own fruit you don't have to go and buy. Because remember, if you don't find things to get involved in, if you don't get up and fix the things you don't like, somebody else does it differently or in a way you don't agree with, you got nobody to complain to but yourself. So get up, get active, get out there. That's it for now. Take care of yourselves. I am the Articulate Grunt. And I'll catch you later. Bye.